excited to see everybody tonight. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for everything that you will continue to do. And we bless you for it, Father. We thank you for an amazing day. We thank you for your divine protection. We thank you for even our time of prayer earlier today as we came together on one accord. And Father, now we're here for the word. We're here to have an experience with you. And Lord, we bless you for it right now. We thank you for keeping us, never leaving us or forsaking us. We thank you for our daily bread. We thank you for love and forgiveness. We thank you for peace and prosperity. We thank you, Father, for every minister on tonight that's going to minister. We say speak mightily through them. Use them for your glory. Bless the woman of God that's going to bring the word. Let it fall on good ground. And may you be glorified for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to praise the Lord tonight? Yeah, we're going to have a good time of praise. Hallelujah. Come on and say praise. When I want to be close. Come on and say I live. Oh, hallelujah. I live. My hands in praise. I need y'all to feel this. Say praise is who I am.
all got to worship with the fruit of your lips. Come on and open up your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. tonight. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless his holy name with the fruit of your lips. Come on and declare that God, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. In my good days, in my bad days, I still choose to praise. I still choose to worship. I still choose to focus on the one that is the way maker. The one that is the, the one that can break up everything that the enemy thought he was doing. See, I don't think you understand that praise opens up the door for your blessing. It opens up the door for your healing. It opens up the door for your deliverance, for your breakthrough. You gotta know that in the midst of whatever you're going through, you still gotta praise him. You know, I think about the worst of days. And then I think about the best of days. And in both of those days, I still can declare that God is God. He is Elohim. He is El Shaddai. The God of more than enough. He is the way maker. He is the Alpha. The Omega. The beginning and the end. He is the one that created the ways for me to ride on. Come on, somebody. You still got to know that, that God is saying, I'm not finished with you yet. He said, I'm just beginning. You have yet to taste and see how good I'm going to be to you. Oh, in these last and evil days when the world is going crazy. He said, I'm going to go crazy with my blessings. I'm going to go crazy with my break, with my breakthrough and my anointing. He said, I'm going to let things fall in your lap that have never fallen before. Meaning that you got favor in this season. You got favor. Or oh, somebody needs to declare that you're in a season of favor like never before. I'm going to release a word on Sunday about the season that we're in. We got to understand that we're in a season of harvest. We're in a season of overflow. Even though the leaves are dying away on the trees and there is a great falling away, God said this is the season of the first fruits. Come on somebody. This is the season and the time to give. This is the season and the time to receive. God is saying that I am opening up blessings that you don't have room enough to bear. He said it don't matter what it looked like or seemed like in this moment. He said I am releasing the harvest, says the Lord. I am releasing the harvest. There is a sound of breakthrough that is in the atmosphere. And if you open up your prophetic ears, you will be able to hear what God is saying in this hour. You will be able to see without seeing, hear without hearing, and know without knowing that God is moving. There is a fresh wind of glory that is hitting your atmosphere. There is a fresh wind, says the Lord. There is a fresh wind of me. There is a fresh wind of, of everything that I have for you. There is a fresh wind. God said, don't get weary in your well-doing. For he said, I am releasing a sound that, that tells you that you are about to reap if you faint not. So even though tests and trials may come, he said, remember this word, you're in a season of harvest. He said, you're in a season of overflow. You're in a season of breakthrough. He said, you ain't got time to quit. Quitting is not an option for you. So don't even think about it. Have your moment, but pick your lip up. This is what Joshua did. And I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just flowing in the spirit. Because God is saying that Joshua, the one that led them into the promise. Even Joshua had a moment. And Joshua cried out unto the Lord. And the Lord said, Joshua, pick your lip up. Pick your face up. And keep moving. Pick your lip up. Pick your face up, Joshua. And keep going forward. He said, yeah, you got a little hardship right now. You got a little frustration right now. But I'm looking for some Joshua's that are ready to pick up that lid. That are ready to shout into the heavenlies. That every wall called Jericho is coming down in the name of Jesus. Every wall that was in your last season that hindered you from prosperity. That hindered you from increase. That hindered you from your favor. Come on, somebody. God said, this is the season of the coming down. This is the season of the falling away. The breaking away, leaves fall down, and he said the wall of Jericho is falling in this season. So whatever it is, you begin to name your wall. Name your wall, fear, doubt, disbelief, sickness, frustration, pain. 
bitterness, sorrow. Oh, come on, somebody. You begin to name your wall and declare that Jericho, you coming down. Jericho, you coming down. What hindered me in this latter in this last season will not hinder me in this now season. You gotta get a fresh wind of what God is saying and what God is doing. I speak overflow. I speak increase. I speak that this last quarter is going to be the, the best quarter. Come on, somebody. We're in the last three months. Three is a prophetic number of completion. God is completing some things in these last three months. The last three months, the last quarter is going to complete this year of our year, the American year. God is saying, look for the overflow. He said, don't just, don't just talk about it. He said, begin to open up your eyes and look and see and tell me what it is that you see. He said, I need you to have a new level of seeing. I need you to have a new level of knowing. He said, I'm not talking about natural seeing, natural knowing. I need you to see past the natural and look into the supernatural. And there are some of you that say, Lord, I can't see. He said, well, in this season, you need to ask me to take the scales off of your eyes to release the scale so that you can see beyond the veil and you can have an encounter with me, says the Lord. God said this is the season and the time for the rising of the prophets. This is the season and the time for the rising of the ministers. This is the season and the time that I'm calling people to the forefront, no longer in the background. He said, I need you to open up your eyes and see that greater is at hand. But you got to rise up. You got to first stand. And God said, stop making excuses as to why you can't be and the why you can't do. He said, to tap into what I got for you in this season. He said, no more excuses. He said, no more excuses. No more excuses. Rise up and be the woman of God, the man of God, the intercessor, the prayer warrior, the prophet. Oh, come on, somebody, the minister, the deacon, whatever it is that God has placed on your life. He said he needs you to rise up in this season, in this time, and in this hour like never before. I speak a Holy Ghost boldness in this atmosphere. I speak a Holy Ghost boldness over those under the sound of my voice. And you will not be afraid to rise up as kings and priests, as queens. Oh, God, I declare and decree that we shall rise. And as we rise, our enemies shall be scattered. As we rise, everything that hindered us, oh God, from in our last season, cannot come into this season. Oh God, as we rise, Father, we make demons flee. As we rise, every demon that was attached to our mind, our finances, our homes, our spouses, our children, we declare and decree freedom right now in the name of Jesus because, Lord, we choose to rise up into purpose. We choose to rise up into destiny. We choose to rise up into overflow. We choose to rise up out of fear. And we choose to overcome fear with faith. We choose to be all that you have called us to be. Oh God, we are more than overcomers. You said we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. And Lord, I, I speak a new level of strength over everyone. Under the sound of my voice, God, we're in the last quarter of the year. Father, we're down to the wire right now. The clock is ticking, oh God. And God said, when I put the ball in your hand, will you shoot? Will you be ready? This is how God speaks to me. Will you be ready when you when the ball is passed? Have you been preparing for the opportunities that are coming your way? Have you been preparing for the opportunities that are coming your way? Because God is saying preparation is meeting up with opportunity. So the ball is coming in your court. Will you shoot or will you fall away? God said, be ye ready for this is the time to rise up and to take positions you never saw yourself taking. But being the man that you never saw yourself being, being the woman that you never saw yourself being, this is the season of becoming. Becoming, says the Lord. You are becoming. You are becoming. You are becoming. Yes. You are becoming, says the Lord. You are becoming. All things are becoming new to you. There are old things that are passing away that the Lord said you can't tap into no more. He said you can't tap into no more. You can't connect with it anymore. It doesn't even confirm nothing in you no more because he said you are beyond that. You are past that. He said, oh, he said all things are becoming new. He said I'm opening up your eyes in this season, in this time and in this hour. I'm releasing a new sound, a new sound, a new sound that is penetrating the heavens. This is harvest time. This is harvest time. Mm, God said we are in a season of white harvest fields. Some of you need to go back and study that. Matter of fact, I'm going to challenge you. There is one scripture in the Bible that talks about white harvest fields. You're in a season of white harvest fields. Go back and study white harvest fields. 
this is a season and a time for overflow. Mm, maybe I, I had a word ready for Sunday, but God has maybe redirected me. Hallelujah. On white harvest fields because we're in a season and a time for white harvest fields. Glory be to God. God, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. You're redirecting us. You're giving us creative ideas in this season. I see creative ideas, creative mindsets. I see creative ideas, creative mindsets, creative ideas, creative mindsets. A new level, a new level, a new level, says the Lord. A new level, a new level. You're going to run. He said going into this new year, listen, this last two quarters are, are going to blow your mind. You're going to go into 2019. Listen, the way you go into 2019 is going to be so profound. I see increased levels in finances and God is, listen, this is what God is showing me. He's like, some of us are getting in the six-figure status, seven-figure status like never before because there is favor that has been released upon your lives. He's, he's positioning some of us in here and some of us that are listening to me to be real financiers of the kingdom, meaning that he's about to put in your hands overflow. And as he put it in your hands, you're going to put it in his house. I'm going to say that again. As he put it in your hands, you're going to put it in his house. And you're going to help enlarge the territory and finance the kingdom. For God said you are rising up into a new era that you've never seen before. Some of you may not hit six figures or seven figures, but you're about to hit a number in your finances that you've never seen before. Because God said cups are filling up in this season. Listen, listen, listen. Cups are filling up in this season. Cups are filling up in this season. And God said get ready for the overflow. Get ready for a good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. Get ready for the overflow. Get ready for the overflow. Get ready for the overflow. Get ready for the turnaround, says the Lord. For just as surely as I am the Lord, things are shifting in your favor. Things are working out in your favor. There is turnaround after turnaround. There is breakthrough after breakthrough. But see, you got to catch this word. You got to snatch it. And you got to snatch it out of the atmosphere. And you got to place it in your heart and say it's mine. Because listen, or you're going to have to go back and watch the recording. Because I'm just flowing in God right now. During this time of prayer. You know, how many of you know that prayer is about communication? And sometimes God want to do all the talking. <laughs> and right now, in this time of communication, God is doing all the talking. And he wants us to just listen. The problem is a lot of times we don't give God a chance to talk. And we can't really hear what God is saying about our season because we think that the prophet got to come and tell us. And that's true in a lot of cases. But God said, if you just open up your ears, I can speak to you as well. A lot of times in prayer, we don't allow God to talk in us to hush our mouth. So this is our time of prayer. But God is speaking. God is, God is the one that is speaking. God is the one that is communicating. God is the one that is releasing the overflow. God is the one that's taking us to new heights and deeper realms in the things of him. I'm telling you, things are shifting. Things are shifting. Things are shifting. He said, you ain't seen nothing yet. You've not seen anything yet. He said, watch your attitude and watch the words that you say. Because your words are eternal. You can't get them back. And your words are prophetic because they got power. He said, so begin to watch what you say. Watch what you do. He said, because your actions are even prophetic to some people, you will minister to people through your actions and you don't even know it. So watch your responses. He said, do you really believe that I am God and that I am the way maker, that I am speaking through the winds, I am speaking through the trees, I am speaking through your jobs, I am speaking through the air, I am speaking. He said, do you really believe that I am the Lord and that I will do what I say that I'm doing? Or are you haphazardly just listening to me and saying, Oh, what well, prophet is just, just, you know, flowing again. See, it's something about somebody that can take the word of a prophet at face value. When you take the word of a prophet at face value, the word says that you shall get a prophet's reward. That's right. and, and that reward is whatever the prophet has released into your atmosphere. So that, whether that be me or 
whether that be anybody else under the anointing of God. And then mind you, I said under the anointing of God, because everybody that calls himself a prophet ain't under the anointing. So everybody that is prophetic, that is a prophet and under the anointing of God, it's up to you to take that word and to run with it and apply it to your life. Apply it to your situation because during this time of prayer, God is communicating to us. God is speaking to us. He's speaking to me. Because as I minister this to you, it ministers to me. And I don't know about you, but I am ready for God to just go ahead and do what he say he's going to do. But we got to position ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually to receive. Anybody receive this one tonight? Come on and bless the Lord if you receive this one tonight. If you receive this, you receive this, you receive this. If God, I, I, I declare and decree that whatever devil in hell that would try to pluck that word up and steal and rob it from your people, I declare and decree that they will not prosper, that they will not be victorious. We declare and decree that this word is ours. We receive it by faith. And God, because of it being received by faith, we shall see the manifestation of God. Because faith is what moves you. Faith is what opens up the heavens. Faith is the currency to your kingdom. So God, we declare that we have the faith to receive. Father, we've been checking our faith account and we declare in the creed that we're building our faith account up. We're building our faith account up. We're believing you like never before. We're trusting you like never before. We're not limiting you like we did in the past. But Lord, we are working on building our faith account up because Lord, with our faith being where it needs to be, we're going to have some credit. Things credited to us as righteous, just like Abraham. So God, when we have good credit with you, we know we can receive what we ask according to your perfect will. So God, show us strategic ways we can build our faith account up. Show us strategic ways that we can increase our faith to another level so that we can be all that you need and purpose for us to be. Show us new ways, oh God. Bless us, oh God, on tonight. Bless us on tonight. Take us to another level. We just say we love on you and we appreciate you for everything, oh God. Thank you for talking to us during our time of prayer. And thank you for the hearers of the word and the doers as well. Father, we bless your name and we thank you for tonight that it is filled with your glory. Thank you for the woman of God that is about to come up to give us the word. That her way is made prosperous in you and she ministers in spirit and in truth. In the mighty awesome name of Jesus we pray. Somebody say amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to ask the woman of God Was Apostle Jocelyn Mathis out of Mississippi. But I want to bring Apostle Vanessa up. Y'all give her a hand clap of praise as she comes up. God bless you.
He said the omission and the commission. Omission, what's been happening in the church today, and the commission, what we need to do. Amen? Amen. So first, he told me to say, it's always going to want a cord. And the, um, the meaning of omission, the legal definition, sometimes it means something, something neg uh, ne neglected or left out or left undone. I'm going to say it again. Omission, the legal definition says sometimes neglected or left out or left undone. Biblical definition says person may be guilty of a sin of omission of the facts or to something which he is able to do and which he ought to do because he's had he's has it has been given to him and the reason he don't do it is because he's been put in a state of situation where he is unable to complete the action and the action I'm talking about tonight is love. The action I'm talking about tonight is love. And that is our mission. It's to love. Because he tells us, love thy neighbor as thyself. How many of us can say we love our neighbor as thyself? <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes we think that we loving our neighbor as thyself. Sometimes we think we are loving like God wants to love. Sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. Amen. Amen. We're striving for perfection. We're trying to walk this thing out to love. Yeah. I'm talking about true love. I had the opportunity to have love, show love. Yeah. More than one time. One time through my husband. One time, a couple times to my, my children that I minister to. One time to the, through, through my foster children. And through even loving myself. Amen. Amen. And I want to just bring to your attention a great, awesome prophet of God. An awesome man that gave us the greatest example. And he did such great things in this in the Bible. And before, and everybody know who he is, that the man called Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, showed the first love. Yes. Amen. God gave his only begotten son that we should have life and have life more yeah. abundant, right? Yeah. But the thing is, Jesus had to show some love. Yeah. When he came on earth, he had to show some things. Yeah. And I'm going to bring your attention to Luke. I think it's Luke 22. Yeah. And 42. Now, Jesus went through some things himself. Yeah. He didn't want to stay on that cross. He went through a whole lot for us. Yeah. But how many of us want to go through for someone else? How many of us want to change our schedules for someone else? See, that's an act of love right there. How many of us want to do that? I just want to bring back your attention. Love. Amen. And I thank God Almighty that as we're here with uh, Prophet Patrice and Pastor D and all the other ministers, we show love. Yeah. We give love. Amen. Yeah. And like Prophet Patrice, you know, I sometimes look at it. That woman, she really loved God. Because the thing is, the talent God has blessed her with, the, the, the mission he has given her, all these different things she's doing, the yes. thing is, she yes. still set aside to suck with her brother or yes. uh, sister. Great example on earth. We are a great example on earth. Love. Yes. Amen. Right. Right. The thing is, we have to show this love to one another. Yes. If Pastor D needs something, and I got it, I need to give it to him because God will provide. Yes. He's going to provide for us. But we have to give up something. We have to give up something. Amen. Amen. You know, like, I'm going to talk about Jesus for a little bit here. He said, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yeah, I want your will to be done, not mine. Yes. Your will to be done, not mine. Yes. Even Jesus went through. He wanted to give it up. He wanted to give that cup up. Because it, he didn't deserve that. Yeah. A lot of times we go through things we don't deserve. 
people mistreat them, we are Christians, the believers. We get mistreated because we have the love of God in our heart. We have that great love in us. And I just want to encourage you, keep loving. Love even more. Do something that you're not comfortable doing. Sometimes we get relaxed and comfortable in love. We don't love like we need to love. Amen. If you hurt, I hurt. If you need, I if I got I got to get it. If I ain't got it, I need to find somebody who can't help. Who can't help you, who can encourage you. Amen. We need to get back to love. And we're in the right place. We with the right people to show love. Because they have all the attributes of love. Amen. Amen. He got me talking about this love thing. You know, a lot of times that we don't want to love because we get angry. People make us mad. Sometimes we can't control people and what they do. Man. We be there for the people. People still let us down. Yeah. Yeah. But it's harvest time. Yeah. Are you right for the harvest? Wow. Are you right for the harvest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like the prophet said tonight, it's harvest time. Mm. But how you going to get your harvest if you ain't right with God? He said, love that neighbor as thyself. And he said that it's great as he and us and he's in the world. Amen. That's 1 John 4 4. And then I'm going to take you to uh, 1 John 5. We have to keep this commandment. <clears throat> we should proclaim our love for God, then disobey him. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Love is more than it's loving your neighbor. Love is loving yourself. Love is obeying God. How can we say we love God and don't keep his commandment? And don't obey his commandment? If he tells us to love that neighbor as thyself, we got to love that neighbor. For many years, I didn't know what neighbor was. <laughs> For many years, I didn't understand how do I love my neighbor. Do I let my neighbor run over me? Do I let my neighbor mistreat me? No. No. I have to come right back with the word of God, with love. You know, when you get re rebuked, uh, when you get told off or something, tell somebody something, you still have to do it with love. And when they get uh, chastised, you know, we get chastised around here, but they still build us right back up with love. Amen? Mm -hmm. All the leaders and ministers, we know that. And we get right back up with love. And that's what it's supposed to do. Even when you chastise your children, you still have to come right back and build them up with love. Right. You got to tell them, I love you, baby. I'm telling you this because I need to teach you some things. Amen. And you have to understand. But when you disobey me, you got to get spanking. Right. You got to get chastised. A lot of times, we don't like spanking our children, but I learned that that, that spanking is not going to hurt them. Amen? Amen? It's okay to spank them because if you really love them, you will correct them. Amen. You will correct your children. Right. We got to understand you will, you need to correct your children at all times because you're loving them. You're showing them that what is right because Jesus, even himself, he had to go to his father and say, Father, not thy will, but thy will be done. Father, I don't want to do this. Don't crucify them, did all these things to me, and I don't love them. Now. I died for them, I lay hands on them, I healed them, and I raised some up from the dead, and they still. Right, right. Father, I got to do this. Right, man. Father, I got to do this. But he was so humble. But he said, Not nah, my will, but your will be done. And talking about your will be done, a lot of times we'll be praying. We pray, Father, give me this. Father, give me that. Father, give me this. Mm -hmm. And then, don't forget to say, if thy will be done. Yeah. See, a lot of times we forget that. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done. Oh, we already know it's his will for us to have life and have life more abundantly. Yeah. We already know that all the things that his will is. Yeah. You know, but when you come to your choices of life, mm -hmm. God wants to bless you. That's a part of your abundant life. That's a part of our abundant life. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that we forget to say, if thy will be done. If thy will be done. Jesus gave us that example. Mm -hmm. Amen. First John uh, 5. <clears throat> we know love, <clears throat> we, 
we know we love God's children. If we love God and obey his commandments, loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Sometimes we complain about because we got to love somebody. We complain because we got to love, show love. Why do we complain? That's a sea moment. Why do we complain? Because we don't want to do it. I know that's why I complain. I start complaining if I don't want to do it. Oh, have mercy. I don't, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to love. I don't want to love the unlovable. Yeah. That's what I used to say. Yeah. How can I love the unlovable? When I'm trying to give them love and they don't want to love me back, they just want to use me, abuse me. Mm. Yeah. But how can I love the unlovable? How did Jesus Christ love us? Right. How did he love us? He gave his life. Will you lay your life down for a brother? A sister? Will we lay our life down? What will we do for the commission? Loving thy neighbor as thyself. What will we do? Loving thy neighbor as thyself. You love you, supposedly. Because if you don't love you, you can't love me no way. Amen. If you don't love God, you can't love me the way I need to be loved. Right, right. First, you got to love God first. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't proclaim our love for God and disobey Him. Love is the biblical. Uh, love in the Bible is more a verb than a noun. More than emotion is a behavior. Love is a behavior. Amen. To love as God loved is to live in the behalf of others and at any, at any cost. At any cost? Mm. I got to love you, Minister D, at any cost? Mm. At any cost? My goodness. These are questions you put in your head. Mm. I got to love you. Any cause. I got to get out of my bed one o'clock in the morning just because you said you think something happened to you. Mm, yes, right you do. Wow. Where's your sacrifice? These are questions. What is our sacrifice? Do you have respect to persons? If I love God, I got to love each and one of you the same. I have to love you. I got to love you. I said, oh my God, I got to, to love the unlovable, the people who lied to me. Who am I? I'm not God. He's in me, but I'm not him. Amen? You know, so for self-love of other wins out. When you win, uh, what, what, win what win? Your love for yourself or your love for others. When the choice is keeping uh, the schedule or healing a brother, what would you do? A brother that's hurt. Who gets the sacrifice? Questions. When the choice is uh, keeping a uh, comfortable, successful career, uh, life on somebody. Your success. For example, we got a great example here. Probably Trish. She have a boutique. She have three different businesses, three to be maybe four or five. You know, even myself, I have two different streams of business finance. But would I sacrifice? We sacrifice. I think about the the mega conference just passed. It was so much. Oh. <laughs> Now that was some love, wasn't it love? Yeah. Cause we stayed here, we stuck with, we stayed with the people till one o'clock in the morning, and some of us indeed to two o'clock. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now that's showing love, yeah. That's some real love right there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I just want to encourage our heart tonight: love a little more, yeah. sacrifice a little more, yeah. being faithful a little more. Yeah. Let's get faithful more. Yeah. Faithful. Cause faithfulness does build the house. Wow. 
Let's get faithful. When we see a person at Walmart, don't turn your head. Wow. Wow. Speak to them. Do like the uh, Edna do. Edna tell everybody about mind of Christ. Amen? And that's a blessing. Everybody know about mind of Christ. Don't turn your head at your job. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Because I know some job they don't want you to talk about God. I know a position I was in one time. The man told me, you can't, you can't talk like that around here. Yes, sir. I respect you. You my boss right now, but you won't be my boss tomorrow. <laughs> if I can't talk about my Lord and Savior, I see you. You had to put that habit in your mind. It would be a way. And I used to pray for a way for me to even speak the word. Because there were so many people needed the word. Need love. You know, even though we don't have, we can't show them our love. We got, we got a whole lot of us in here can show love. We can, we can lead. I don't know how to love, right? Maybe you came, Minister D, in the love area that I'm weak in. Amen. And I know, Prophet Trish, you can show me some things. Show me how to love more, how to forgive. We want to be forgiven, but we don't want to forgive up. We want to judge other folks. All right, all right, all right. We want to judge other folks when they down. Mm -hmm. Don't kick a brother or sister when they down. Wow. That's not love. All right. They already know what they're doing. They already know they don't see it. They already know they're not right. right. They need a spoken word in their life. Right. A spoken word. They're showing some love right there. Mm -hmm. I need a little love. Amen? Mm -hmm. When I'm down, I don't need to be kicked down because I'm already down. Show me a little love. I know when I don't see. I know when I haven't did the mission. I know when I haven't kept the commission. So just teach me, lead me, grab me by my hand and show me some love. Amen? Amen. Show me some love because love is what casts out all fear. That's right. Amen. Love casts it out. I'm telling you. When you love a person, like they say, you can love the hell out of them. Amen. And some people think they came for who got the power. We got the power. Because we got the Holy Ghost power. That's it. Amen. We can love a person. I don't care what color they are, what race they are, or whatever. Amen. You know, some of the things that go on in the world, y'all know what's taking over the world, trying to take over the world. But it can't happen. Because we got believers that it's straight. Amen? Amen. Amen. We still got to love them. Amen. And that was the last love I had to handle. Loving bisexual, homosexual. I had to get over that thing just being crystal clear. I got you. Yeah. I had to get over that one more thing. And God did it. That's good. And I could shout about that. Hallelujah. That's good. I could shout about that thing because I was judging. Right. Yeah. I, I was judging. Uh -huh. But they're a person. That's right. They're a person right. too. Man. See, that's one that loved it. Man, I want to <laughs> the move. Uh-uh. Don't you say that at your mom. Listen, baby. Come on, it's a better life. That's it. It's All a right, All right. You don't have to. It's someone that loves you for real. Yes. That loves yes. you for real. Amen. 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 Wow. Just because you may have more money than me and I may have more money than you or whatever, mm -hmm. I can look down on you. That's right. Amen. If I accept the commission sent from the Father, sent through the Son, and the Son laid his life down for us. He didn't want to do it, but he did. Amen. He got tired. Yeah. They did him so wrong. Even though we're going to have some Judas in the camp. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How I decided to build my kingdom, but rather on the basis of, of how I can best advance the kingdom of God. We got to advance the kingdom of God so we would be in the right position to get the harvest. Because it's seed time and harvest. Mm -hmm. And our seed can be love. Amen. That love. That love thing. Loving the person. Not because, my, I'm going to say this and I'll be finished. You know, my mom left earth as, when I was 17. When I greatly need her. And the thing is, I said, wow. But did I have someone that loved me? If I didn't have no one else to love me, where would I be today? 
will I be today? Can you imagine losing your mother at a time you really need her? And I loved that woman. I loved her so much. And she gave, she gave me some ways of being loving people because neighbors were there how we used to cook to everybody. But the thing is, love, if, even though I be reborn again, I can't get the love that God got for me from another person until I'm able to receive love. You have to receive love. When someone is loving you, you have to receive the love and understand love. Because a lot of times we walk in fear. Nobody else could love you like mama can, like mama did. But I thank God Almighty I had someone to love me like mama did. And like daddy did. And like daddy didn't. I still got that love. That was my prayer. Is that I just see your love. Let me be able to understand your love. Let me be able to express your love to your people. Until I got right with God. And confessed Christ. Until I got for real with God. He got butt naked before God. And asked him to teach me. That's who taught me how to love. Like he loved. Amen. And I just want to encourage your heart tonight. Get a little closer to God. Pray that God give you the love that he wants to have. Keep the commission. He said, loving thy neighbor as thyself. And neighbors need to be loved. We need to be loved. Your household is started in your household first. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. And may God keep me in his name. Amen. 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 We can never get tired of hearing about love. Amen. Amen. Because love is, is what makes us who we say we are, Christians. Yeah. You have not love, the Bible says you have not God. And and I want everybody to listen to this because it was God was reminding me of some stuff that, you know, um, he said, he took me back to a situation where I had ministered a word um, on Facebook Live or something a while ago, and um, and it was particularly to some of my mentees. And one of my mentees was, I guess they was having a hard day, and they just went off. Like I was talking about them particularly. I had no clue what they was going through, right? Nothing, had no clue. Didn't know nothing about that. I'm prophetic, but I tell people I ain't that prophetic. God don't tell me everything. So, um, and so one of the things, God just took me back to that situation when she was talking about love. And, she, and he said, tell them, don't be afraid to say I'm sorry. Amen. Because that's love. That's showing love and humility all at the same time. Because this, this young lady um, happened a while ago, but she went off, went off, went off, fussed me out in front of everybody. And so I had to bring correction to the situation in front of everybody. And it was done in love or what have you. And uh, instead, and, and I guess she got her whole life together. And instead of com coming back and saying, Prophetess, I was so wrong. She just said, I just want to bless you. Let me send you some money. What's your PayPal thing? Send me some money. I was like, oh, okay. And then I said, God, is that the way of saying I'm sorry? And he said, yeah. He said, because some, some people aren't humble enough to just say, I was wrong. I'm sorry. But he said, you love them where they're at. That's right. And you receive them. He said, because it's, it's not up to her. He said, it's, it's up to you. How are you going to show the love that I put in you? I'm no longer looking at her. I'm looking at you. How are you going to respond to the person that did you wrong? Will you receive them? Will you love them? And then when you do somebody wrong, will you be humble enough to say, look, I'm sorry. I was caught up in my sin. I had a bad day. I had stuff happening. And this is just not the type. It's just not a good time for me. And there's no excuse. Listen, God is challenging us to go to another level of love. Because 
if we have not love, we have not him. Listen, this is a salvation issue. Y'all don't think that's a, that, that message was that serious. But this is a salvation issue. Because if you can't do it, then are you really a child of God? That's what separates you from the world is love. And God clearly says, if you have not love, you have not God. So, and then we come to this thing, but did not preach, did not teach, did not prophesy, did not lay hands on the sick. And God's like, well, I never knew you. Why? Because you didn't have the love of God for real, for real, on the inside of you. It's not enough to show love to people you know, mm -hmm. to people that ain't never got on your nerves. But what about the person in your house? Ah, right. What about the person you divorced a few years ago yeah. that you still got issues in the tissue with? What about that? What about daddy that wasn't there? Nah, daddy nah. that slept around on mama or beat mama up. What about mama who left you? I mean, like, like seriously, we as Christians, we fool ourselves right. into right. thinking that we're good, that we're Christians, and we're living this holy life, mm. but we're walking around with bitterness and unforgiveness in our hearts. And God says, and here's another one. If you can't forgive, how do you expect me to forgive you? you? That's right. All right. All right. Christians should not have an issue with loving. Yeah, that's right. They should not have an issue with forgiving, but yet we do. Amen. So that's why one of my prayers for me is, God, give me a heart that is quick to repent and glorify you. Show me the error of my ways so that I don't walk around here foolishly thinking I'm good when I'm not. And then I get before your people and I'm making a mockery of you because I'm not living the life that you desire for me to live, but yet I'm preaching to them acting like I am. That's called fake. Mm. And I don't have time to play with the things of God. So God, show me me. I don't want to be the person in the mirror that I look at and then I forget what I look like when I turn around. And God was like, well, I was just trying to show you how you need to let go of that foolishness that happened at work last week because you walking around here mad still. Come on now. With the person that, that did this. I just want, I just want, God was just showing me how we, we need to be quick to love Quick to forgive. Right. And if it's you, you wrong, you need to be quick to say I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. That's called humility. But at the same time, it's called love. God says, I give grace to the humble, but the prideful I bring to a low place. So, Father, right now, help us in this love walk. Help us to forgive, help us to love at a greater level. Even the, you know, even the people that are closest to us, that hurt us the most, that get to us the most, oh God. Because they know the right buttons to push and they know the things to say. But Lord, don't let us hold those things against people that we supposed to love and care about. And, and not just them, but strangers, oh God. Help us to walk in the fullness of your love so we can exemplify it to you your people. Forgive us when we fall short and help us to forgive others when they fall short when it comes to us and life. But Lord, let us walk around that no matter what we choose to love, we choose to forgive and we choose to repent when we're wrong and not walk in the error of our ways. Help us, every single one of us, even those that are watching. And Lord, if there be someone that is watching, that needs to accept you as Lord and Savior, I pray for them right now, that they receive you, and they accept you, and they declare that you are Lord of their life, and they choose to make Jesus Christ their Lord on this day. Lord, minister, them, minister to them right here, right now. Bless them wholeheartedly. Meet them at their point of need, and bring them into the kingdom by saving their souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we're getting ready to close out. So um, before we go, we want to give you a chance to give. Those that are watching live, we want to give you a chance to text to give. Text the amount that you want to give to the number on the screen. And whether it be five, ten, a thousand dollars, whatever is in your bank account that you want to disperse to this church, go ahead and send it now. 
Um, if you're writing out checks, write them out to Mind of Christ International. Penny's ministry, you got loose change. Remember the red vase. You can drop it in the red vase. Amen. But if you are ready to give, then you can give. And I'm going to ask uh, everyone to stand with me as we get ready to leave. And if you have something to give, you can give on your way out. And as we're closing out, our social media family can be texting to give. And we want to say thank you. Uh, I don't know if those that watch it live or go back and watch the recording, they go back and they do text to give. Thank you for every seed that you have sown, those that are part of our live uh, Facebook family. We appreciate you. And we speak a hundredfold blessing over you uh, that whatever your hands touch will be blessed in Jesus' name because we do have online givers and we are grateful for them as well. Amen. So we're getting ready to go. Everybody will stand if you don't mind. If you're still giving, you can go ahead and stay giving. I'm just going to pray us out. Amen. Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for an amazing time in you. We thank you for... Uh, every seed that has been sown, oh God, we speak that, that it will return to them 30, 60, or 100 fold, just as your word declares. Father, we just ask that you bless their hands, whatever their hands touch, oh God. Let, let it be prosperous. This is that prosperous time of the year, um, and we just look for you to do great things. We thank you for the word that we have received on tonight. Bless the woman of God that poured out, poured back into her bosom, oh God. And bless us as we leave. We thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for dispatching angels to go before us, to keep us safe on every hand. And Lord, allow us to return back to your house on Sunday to praise and worship you even the more. Go to another level, oh God. It's in the mighty, awesome name of Jesus we pray. And we all say, amen. 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 Make sure you love on somebody before you go. Amen. Amen. amen.